Welcome to this video on the registration of organ music. In this video, I'm going to talk about several pieces that are commonly encountered by church musicians. One of the first requirements in any form of music making is to find an appropriate sound and one that matches the mood of the music that we are playing. On the organ, we have to accept the sounds that are on offer on the particular instrument. On a well-crafted instrument, finding these combinations can be a very pleasing task. On others, it can be more a source of frustration. However, in most cases, when we spend some time getting to know the instrument that we're playing, when we look very carefully, we think a little bit outside the box, and we're creative, we can find some appropriate registrations that enhance the music that we're playing. Today, we're going to try to find some registrations on an organ with two manuals and pedal. This organ has 13 stops, six on the grate, this manual, six on the swell, the upper manual, and one stop in the pedal. We also have three couplers, swell to grate, swell to pedals, and grate to pedals. I'm going to talk about a very well-known chorale prelude by Johann Sebastian Bach. Ich ruf zu dir, Herr Jesu Christ. I cry to thee, Lord Jesus Christ. This is from a collection of pieces from the book Orgelbüchlein, or Little Organ Book, a selection of pieces to be played in church throughout the liturgical year. When we're looking for an appropriate registration for this piece, first thing is to see, did Bach himself make a, any indications of how he wanted the piece to be registered? In many cases, he didn't. But we have quite a simple instruction in this piece. Underneath the title, it says, on two manuals and pedal, written in Italian here. So it's quite clear we have a solo, we have an accompaniment, and we have a pedal line, a bit like a continuo part. Maybe the best way of going about this is, first of all, to find a nice solo. Now, even on quite a small instrument like this, one can be surprised at how many different combinations one can find. Let's start by looking at some of the eight-foot stops. So if we start with maybe the principal sounds, the quite full sounding stops on the organ. On the grate, we've got an open diapason. Let's see how that sounds. Quite a full sound. We've also got an open a violin diapason on the swell. Let's compare that. Maybe a little bit more subtle than the open diapason on the grate. We've also got some flute stops. Here's the roar gedacht on the swell. Maybe a little bit soft for a solo. We could combine that with a string stop, the solitional. That sound has a little bit more character than the roar gedacht by, by itself. On the grate, we've also got um, a flute sounding stop here. It's called a stopped diapason. We could possibly branch out from there and try an eight and four foot sound together. So this is the stopped diapason with the harmonic flute four foot stop. We also have four-foot stops. Now, four-foot stops wouldn't sound appropriate if we played them at pitch. This is a principal four-foot on the grate. If I play at pitch, it's obviously an octave too high. Now, if we play an octave lower, it sounds like this. If we compare that sound now with the open diapason on the grate, the eight-foot stop, and then the four-foot, it's maybe a little bit more subtle than the eight-foot stop. We also have a four-foot on the swell, 
a gem's horn. Let's try that one, also down the octave. Quite an attractive, subtle sound. So, you can see already we've found a multitude of possibilities, and I haven't gone through them all. If we decided that the eight-foot principal sound was the one that we, we like best for the solo, we need to start finding an accompaniment that will balance that. So, I've taken the eight-foot on the great. That means we've got to find our accompaniment on the swell. As it's an eight-foot stop, let's stick with the eight-foot sounds for the accompaniment. Here's the violin diapason as the accompaniment. Quite a present sounding stop, quite uh, clear. Yeah. We'll be able to hear a, an accompaniment against the solo. We need to check, of course, is the accompaniment too loud? The solo still has to dominate. Let's try. Certainly at the console, that sounds quite good. We would, of course, need to go back into the body of the church to check, is that really going to work? The best way of doing that is if you have a friend who can play a few excerpts while you go down and listen in the church, then you can check, is that going to be appropriate? However, sounds good for us now. Let's see how we're going to add a pedal registration to that. On this organ, we just have one pedal stop, the 16 foot. So we'll definitely take that. That's going to be quite weak by itself. We need to couple. That's our only option here. So we're obviously not going to couple it to the solo voice. We're going to couple it to the accompaniment. So we take the stop swell to pedal. Let's try that together. So, let's try another sound. We could see does that accompaniment also match the principal forefoot that we tried earlier. Yeah. Also nice, maybe a matter of personal choice. We found the other forefoot on the swell, the Gemshorn forefoot, that made a really lovely sound by itself. Now, if we take that as our solo on this well, obviously the accompaniment has to be on the grate. Yeah. Let's see. The open diapason is almost certainly going to be too loud, so we need to look at the other eight-foot stops. We could look at the dulciana, the softest of the eight-foot stops on this organ. We're going to have to couple that to the grate, as that's our accompaniment, so the grate to pedals, and here we go. Quite a nice subtle registration, I think. Possibly the accompaniment is on the soft side. We could try adding the stopped diapason to the dulciana. Let's see how that sounds. That might have gone a little bit the other way. Maybe the accompaniment now is a little bit too dominant. But as I say, you'd really need to check that by going into the body of the church.